No, I listen to it all the time. I tell all my friends to smack it raw. podcast contains mature content the views and opinions expressed by the coast are not necessarily those of the host listener discretion is advised hand jobbers and hand jobbies welcome to the smack and raw podcast episode what are we on now travis 138 138 it's episode two of watch along with travis and matt and we had so much fun last week going to 1997 wwf january 20th 1997 now we're just gonna go to January 27th, 1997, and watch the very next episode because we enjoyed the shit out of it. Just about all of you guys enjoyed the shit out of it, except for like one person who spit in our Twitter poll. And by the way, if I put up a Twitter poll and I ask for your opinion and you spit on it, go in the comments and let me know why you spit. So maybe we can make it better. Maybe we can fix it. We, we're here to try and entertain you. We want you to enjoy the show. So if you didn't like it, I'd like to know why. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to call you names or, you know, threaten your, your family or anything like that, unless you're a dick about it. But if you have a legitimate gripe or something you just didn't enjoy, let me know. Let Travis know. Let us know in the comments, wherever, so we can try and fix it. Or, yeah, or he can flick you off. I said I'm not going to. I'm, I didn't make any anything, uh, any statements that Travis isn't going to do mean awful horrible things on twitter or in person so i've got no control over him and also i guess i should introduce him correctly i am the warden matt ritter and he is my co-host sir cuss a lot travis pointer aka the dragon king aka big t aka sweet t aka t money aka t bag aka black merlin aka the h n i c travis how you doing today i'm doing all right sir how you doing I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And uh, as what we will be doing for the foreseeable future, we are going to talk a little bit about current wrestling product today. Have you been watching anything, Travis? Or um, I saw the Undertaker promo and I watched NXT. Okay, what did you think of the Undertaker promo? Undertaker promo was some cool shit. I like what he's doing right now. It's not like the straight up, you know, dead Undertaker thing. Kind of did this weird mix of you know American badass with the with the dead man going on right now. I like that. I like what he's got going on. See, so a few things from this Undertaker promo. Um, A, I agree. He's got the beanie and the bandana on, which tells me it's the American Badass. He even had a leather jacket on. And the way he did the promo was very similar of the American Badass. It wasn't very dead man-esque, but it could also be big evil, because don't forget, between American Badass and the return of the undead Undertaker, we had big evil Undertaker, which was kind of, Mm -hmm that hybrid i actually had the big evil hoodie it was probably my favorite hoodie and i wish i was still skinny enough to fit in it and still had it um but he said some very interesting things in this promo he called aj allen he said that alan jones yes he said that his wife michelle got the faith breaker over more than aj ever got the styles clash over which i loved and uh he said he was gonna make him famous which is very clearly a uh, American badass, big evil taker line. The I'll make you famous. That was mm-hmm. when he fought Jeff Hardy and all of that. And on top Started of that, he mentioned DDP. And your favorite WCW whole, guy. That is correct. He is my favorite WCW guy. Unfortunately, they fucked him in WWF because that whole run he had was terrible. Yeah. Um, he also mentioned an unholy trinity, Travis. Now I've got to assume that one third of that unholy trinity is the Undertaker and. The other third, or the second third, is probably Kane. But we don't know who the third third is. The last one third of that trinity. Could it be Michelle McCool? Could it be Alistair Black? Possibly. I know nothing would make you happier than it being Alistair Black. (laughs) I mean, no, listen. I don't think he can come over because last I checked, he was 
doing stuff with NXT UK, and I don't know if he's made it back to the States, but I'd be cool with the demon Finn Balor. Clearly, it's not going to be The Fiend because The Fiend has bigger fish to fry than fucking helping The Undertaker out at WrestleMania. He's got John Cena and the Firefly Funhouse match and all that fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, no, it, I'd be cool with Demon Finn Balor. I'd be cool with Aleister Black. I can't really think of anyone else I'd want to be part of that unholy trinity. I don't want to see Gangrel or any of the ministry come back. Kevin Thorne. No, no. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, <laughs> two years ago, I heard a year ago, I don't remember how long it's been since we've had Eric on this podcast, but we had a third co-host. His name was Eric. He was supposed to be here every week so that Travis didn't have to. Travis could take time off. Eric left us. One of the only things Eric ever contributed to this podcast was the false narrative that Mordecai, a.k.a. Kevin Thorne, still existed, had a blog. <laughs> And would watch our show. <laughs> and also that was, was in the rafters watching yeah, yeah. episodes of <laughs> Raw and SmackDown and then blogging about them. This is something that Eric contributed that died with Eric. If we were going to have someone, it'd have to be Mordecai, not Kevin Thorne. Kevin, I, no. Unless he's bringing back Ariel, no Kevin Thorne. <laughs> but speaking of Kevin Thorne, I'm glad you brought that up. I renamed my Pharaoh Thorne Kevin Pharaoh Thorne. This is Pokemon again. This is Pokemon again. Okay. Yeah. I know you're not hip to anything past the original 151. So, yeah. Yeah. Which is disappointing. Right. Like, I go back and I play Leaf Green and Fire Red every now and then, but I don't play anything else. I don't, I don't fuck with this. Yeah, you're, you're missing out, dude. You're missing no, out. No, um, no, I'm good. I'm good. You did good to get me to play Ruby and Sapphire back in the day. Even then, I have the option of playing those again. I don't. <sighs> you're missing out. Um, New Jack's documentary just was released on Tuesday for the dark side of the ring and this guy is fucking nuts travis he stabbed a 72 year old man in the ring because the 72 year old man told him hey now this is a 72 year old journeyman who never made it to like a major company but he told new jack hey you might be able to learn some things from me new jack felt like the guy was kind of trying to throw him around and no selling his shit and new jack's like all right fuck you you no sell my shit and he pulled out an improvised stabbing utensil and stabbed the 78-year-old man. He tased uh, – Do you are you familiar with Vic Grimes from ECW? The name the sounds name? familiar. Okay. Yeah. Well, him and Vic Grimes were on a platform, and they were supposed to do a move off the platform onto a concrete floor. Vic Grimes decided after getting up there, I can't do this. New Jack said, fuck that, and pulled Vic with him. Vic did a flip and landed on New Jack's head, cracking New Jack's skull, and then never, never called New Jack to check on him. They had a rematch a year later, and during that rematch, before the rematch, A, New Jack says before he does all of this that he went and got high. He was doing cocaine. He's high for everything. That's one. Two, New Jack went and bought a stun gun. So when they went up on that famous New Jack, clip that everyone sees where he throws the guy off the scaffold and he hits the tables and the ropes and then yeah he stunned Vic Grimes with a stun gun and Vic Grimes said I can't feel my legs and he's like you won't need a motherfucker bombs away and threw him off he said he was trying to throw him to the floor but he didn't throw him hard enough he was trying to kill him then he said he climbed down and walked up to Vic Grimes and said now we're even motherfucker and just left him there it was fucking psycho. <laughs> they never even got into the stuff with him and Terry Reynolds. He talked a little bit about his upbringing and how he watched his father stab his mother and shoot his mother in the leg when they, she tried to leave with them. And there's a whole bunch of shit going on here, Travis. A whole bunch of shit it is definitely worth a watch. Um, I enjoyed it. Kate enjoyed it. And Kate doesn't really enjoy anything out of what she knows when it comes to wrestling. Mm -hmm. But this definitely had her attention. So definitely go check that out. Um... AEW. Did you watch any AEW? No. Okay. Uh, they announced the TNT Championship, which I'm assuming is basically the TV Championship. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, they've got a bracket, and that bracket is going to see Sammy Guevara, Darby Allen, uh, Chris Jericho, Sean Spears, um, Dustin is in it. Uh, I think Jimmy Havoc, maybe. Kip Sabian. 
Um, and then Lance Archer, who had his first match. We'll talk about that on AEW this past week. Um, Brody Lee, a.k.a. Luke Harper, still doing his Vince McMahon uh, skits. People are still not happy. I'm enjoying them. This week, he uh, somebody yawned, and he got in their face and told them that yawning was a sign of weakness and being tired is a sign of weakness and did a whole thing on that. It was fairly entertaining. Jericho had a promo from his house where he was in his jeans, in a hot tub, sipping a little bit of the bubbly, and Vanguard 1, the drone that Matt Hardy has, showed up, and he started trying to get Vanguard 1 to join the inner circle, even hung a little shirt from Vanguard 1, and then Vanguard 1 took off with the shirt. That shit was really fun. Um, Marco Stunt was the victim for Lance Archer in his first ever match, and that's what this was. This was a fucking mugging on uh, your boy Marco Stunt, like... That's not really what I wanted to see for Lance Archer's first match, but it was what it was. Felt a little bad for Marco. Um, yeah, why they feel yeah. like that, man? That's fucked up. Yeah, here's the thing. AEW had some people in the crowd. Uh, they were six feet apart, but they still had Britt Baker and I think Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford and Jimmy Havoc on the heel side. They had Billy Gunn and his son, and then some of the best friends, including Orange Cassidy on the face side when they weren't you know, doing stuff. So you had cheering and stuff, which I enjoy. I like the, that aspect of AEW. But AEW, match-wise, didn't really give me anything this week that I was like, oh, that's something you got to go check out. That match meant something. Now, in the coming weeks, we're going to get John Mo- – I think next week, actually, or this upcoming week, we're going to get John Moxley versus Jake Hager for the title on AEW Dynamite. We've got some stuff coming up that should be interesting. But this week, there was really nothing that I'd be like – You got to go tune in. Most of it is just the clips and skits. You can probably check out on uh, YouTube. But NXT, did you go watch NXT? I did watch NXT. What did you think about the main event, Travis? Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic versus Damian Priest. I enjoyed the fuck out of that match. I think um, this whole empty arena thing they're doing right now works best with NXT. Okay. Of, of, the, of their three programs, it works best with NXT because their crowds are generally smaller anyway. So it made sense that, you know, if there was empty, it would feel more similar to what they normally do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I'm love not the, shitting on them. Don't, no, I, don't, I, know. I know. I love the match. I just, I feel like this was supposed to be a takeover match and this match would have been that much better in front of a crowd. Oh, yeah. Cheering yeah. for all the spots and everything. Definitely. Definitely. Um, we also got the women's uh gauntlet match where they showcase my girl Shotzi Blackheart my wife's favorite female wrestler Shotzi Blackheart um <laughs> getting four wins in a row until she faced Dakota Kai and this is another one that would have benefited from the crowd because oh, yeah. when you go through something like that as a character having the crowd behind you and cheering for you makes that moment it, it builds it helps it all build up for you and when you don't have that it's kind of like I know what you're trying to do but she's not taking me there, you know? But, I mean, they did establish a few things. I was disappointed she didn't come out in the tank. That was what it was. But I have yet to see her got, come out in the tank. She's got that senton finish. Mm-hmm. She's got that unique submission she was using, which was really cool. They really showcased what she could do here, even though she didn't win. So they kind of got her over without putting her over. Yeah, yeah, I knew Dakota Kai was winning. But it made sense to put Dakota Kai in that. I get it. Mm-hmm. I get why she won. So it was just like, okay. And we may be getting a new LWO. You remember a couple weeks ago on Not Good Enough for Hulu when we were still able to do that? We talked about how there was a wrestler by the name of Raul Mendoza, and I was joking about how the Dark Order captured him because it was guys in masks that grabbed him and threw him into an SUV. Sure. Well, this week, Joaquin Wilde had the same thing happen to him. So there has now been two Hispanic superstars captured by guys in luchador masks and shoved into an SUV. And if they're going to do a Hispanic I didn't see this, so, yeah. faction, well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, we finally got not good enough <laughs> for Hulu, NXT edition, Joaquin Wilde getting captured. Um. If they're going to do this, if they're going to make a Hispanic faction, I need it to be the LWO returning. Please do not give me the Mexicals. Do not do that again. I do not need that. I do not want that. 
They had Hoovy. I so did the LWO, Travis. It's true. It's true. It's true. And the LWO didn't come out in overalls on fucking lawn. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm John Deere so, riding yeah. more. <laughs> so let's not do that. But no, I'm interested to see where they're I going. I remember watching and think like, yo, this is the most racist shit I've seen in so long. But then I get to see Hoobie, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, the most racist, racist shit I've seen in so long in a product that is consistently fairly racist. Mm-hmm. Like when you look back on fucking i loved them and i didn't realize it at the time but looking back on a crime time was racist as shit they were fun i enjoyed the shit out of them but it was a racist ass gimmick yeah it was it was mexico's same shit um no do something cool bring back the lwo i'm sure you guys have the copyright to it you guys aren't using the nwo factions are a big thing in nxt this could be something fun that you could build and really utilize these guys for there's not another faction in NXT outside of the Undisputed Era, so give us the face faction. Give us the LWO. I want to see what's up with these guys in Luchador Mass. I want to see where Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza got taken. And here's the thing. You're filming at Full Sail. You're in Florida. There's no shortage of Latinos in Florida. Mm-hmm. As someone who used to live there, they're everywhere. I guarantee you, if they bring back the LWO and they put out LWO merch, it's going to sell like a motherfucker. Down there? Hell yeah. Not just yeah. down there, all over the place. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about all over. I'm just talking about like even like selling tickets to NXT and shit. Like yeah. that place would be packed with those people, man. Like just people who want to see themselves. It's just, you know. Great uh, my buddy, my buddy uh, from Twitter and the Smack Draw podcast at SES Vince, when we were doing our tournament on Sunday, determine the best wrestler. Um, on all four brands currently he is hispanic and he was the whole time he was rooting for his boys ray mysterio and he's you know he was representing for the culture vince if you're listening to this hit me up on twitter let me know do you want to see the lwo come back is that what you want to see from raul mendoza and uh joaquin wild are are you interested in that like hit us up let us know um and that's i mean really that's it travis like there's not a whole lot to talk about from smackdown we got wrestlemania coming up this weekend by the time this podcast is released um i'm assuming you're gonna get it up before wrestlemania but just in case (laughs) just in case night one might be over um we'll see how wrestlemania goes this year travis and john my wife and caroline all have tentative tentative plans to uh watch wrestlemania together via skype so we can respect social distancing or zoom um but still enjoy the show together so uh, and then we'll Travis and I'll talk about maybe Sunday night doing a post show and putting that up on Patreon for you guys. Yeah. All right, Travis, you ready to get into the watch along? Let's get into that watch along. All right, everyone. Like I said, it is 1997, January 27th, 1997, Monday Night Raw. We're going to do a countdown. Give him a second. Three, give him a second. Give him a second. Give him a little bit I know, of time. It'll be three, two, one, then play. So we are going to go three, two, one, play. Oh, shit. And we're still – did That's you what? not hit play? No, I hit play, but here, I'm using my PlayStation controller and the controller is going to sleep. So where are you at now? Uh, 12, 13, 14, 15. When you get to 21. I'm at 21 right now. All right. And they're just recapping what we watched last week with Bret Hart quitting and then uh, Stone Cold calling him a crybaby because he is. And then the Fatal 4-Way match, Undertaker, Vader, Austin, and Bret Hart, which I, I actually really just want to go watch. <laughs> we talked about this last week, too. Like, the shots in this match, the fighting – the believability, it's not pretty, it's not beautiful, but it's, uh, speaking of beautiful, I just saw a sable. I'm sorry, I got distracted. Yeah. <laughs> I uh-huh. <get> it. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, the fight, this, this is sometimes, a dope opening. It is. This felt like what the show was supposed to be, what the show was called. It felt raw. Yeah, and you got that saxophone playing in the background, which reminds me kind of a little bit of Val Venus, a little bit of Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
right now the raw entrance set that we're looking at right now is about as elaborate as what we get in the performance center. <laughs> yeah. If it, actually, not a performance set. It still might be a little bit better because they still had a screen. <laughs> That's true. But outside that of that. Big motherfucker, Travis. Yeah, Ahmed Johnson was a big motherfucker. That's why they kept trying to push him so much, even though he was terrible. <laughs> That's why he was like he was always injuring people and shit because he was so fucking strong, but like you know, didn't Look like at control those shit. nostrils. <laughs> How your nose strong, dude? Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man, no. Oh, Hugo. I remember Hugo. You know, I feel like because they're showing the Spanish table, they're going to break the Spanish table. I can see that. Remember there was a time when, like, every pay-per-view they would break the Spanish table? Oh, yeah. No, that was a that was a thing. Yeah. Had to be done. That was also a bad dominator. What is with these dominators? Don't get me wrong. I understand. Ahmed Johnson's a big motherfucker. Last <laughs> I say week, he's fucking heavy. Bart Gunn was a big motherfucker. Big, solid, heavy motherfucker. But those dominators are mm, not pretty. These fools. So, so uh, we got... We've established the, the not so, Mason. Yes, Chris Scott and the uh, not-so-insane clown posse. <laughs> coming out with Crush, who I, again, maintain Web Hawaiian or not. All Saturday night. Why is that ring so small? Because the venue was so small. That's all they could fit in there. Okay, so. Watch your back. He's come crush. Kona crush. The Hawaiian. <laughs> anyway, what were you about to say? I was going to say, even though he's Hawaiian, like, I still don't feel like he deserves to be in the nation. Nah, nah, nah. Because he looks they, white as shit. Yeah, they haven't uh, figured this thing out yet. Also, uh, I can't remember. I looked their names up last week. I think it was like Wolfie D and JC Ice or some shit like that. Yeah, some dumb shit. They look like two white guys who saw a picture of the NWA and decided to dress like the NWA. Yeah, and then one day one of them said, you know, we should do, we should put the jackets on and shit, but don't wear a shirt under it. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. And nobody was there to say, no, that's not cool. So, Jesus. little known fact for everyone is uh, Ahmed Johnson, well, everyone listen to this, went to WCW. And when he went to WCW, uh, he was one of the first people to rip off an idea from uh, HKW. He stole Travis's wrestling ring name, something we call him now, which is uh, Big T. Yeah, man. And then he feuded with Booker T over the letter T in their name. Well, it was, they, 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 really Travis, feuded, they were feuding more over... The, the rights to the Harlem Heat name. But, yeah, that was part of it. The T. I remember them. I specifically just remember them feuding over the letter T. But <laughs> poor Travis had to sit here and watch Ahmed Johnson just completely rip off his gimmick and yeah, then man. fight over a letter while pretending to be Travis. Yeah, man. Fucking ridiculous. And, honestly, I think he still owes me an apology. I agree. I wouldn't ask him because, like you said, his nose is strong. So Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I'll say that from here. If he was standing right here, I'd be like, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a guy that, that if he me. walked into a public restroom, I'd stop peeing and leave. <laughs> well, let's let him have his privacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't need to be in there with you. Because I don't think there's much of a fight I could put up if he decided to have his way with me. <laughs> if he decided to have his <laughs> I know you didn't mean that as you said it. No, I did. <laughs> oh, you did. Okay. I 100% did. Oh, okay. I was more laughing at that weird jumping, spinning elbow drop that he just missed. Oh, well, yeah. We're, we, we, you know you're going to see some some uh, very uh, trash wrestling from him. So I have never understood how a, um inverted atomic drop is not a low blow. Yeah, yeah. It 100% is, but they don't treat it like that. D'Lo with the hair. So weird. Oh, my God. 
I feel like if we just don't look at them too closely, then maybe we can get through this without like cringing so much. But like they keep giving us close ups. <laughs> yeah, no. And having a white guy go nation of domination and do the fit like no. Yeah, stop. Yeah, yeah. Stop. I've done that, like, not seriously, but, like, when we talk about the nation, I've been, like, I'm not ever doing that again because those guys, it made me realize how dumb I look doing it. So, no, done. All respect to the nation, I will not be saluting with the the black power fist ever again. The fuck is for – did you see that? Oh, no, I missed it. Whatever. What are you doing? I'm looking up something. Okay. Uh, Farouk – is standing inside the Ross set, just creeping from the darkness. Oh, wow. <laughs> what are you looking up? I was actually looking up to see what was happening on Nitro the same night. Of course, you know, there's some NWO shit happening. This is right after... Um, this is right after Star, like not right after Starcade, but pretty soon after Starcade '96. I think that was when uh, we got uh, Hogan versus Piper. Um, yeah, Eric Bischoff. They say Eric Bischoff makes some controversial decisions. Giants going after Hollywood Hogan. Um, let's see, Lex Luger's trying to you know get some support in the fight against the NWO. Remember, this is still like Sting is like, you know, still just standing around watching. Um, there's some Four Horsemen stuff happening. You know, Hugh Morris has a match. Um, you know, why they would even put that in the description. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> I'm not worried about any of that. You know what I'm, you know what I'm excited about, Travis? Because I'm looking at the, the uh, description for this tonight. Mm-hmm. Know what we're going to see? No, tell me. British Bulldog versus Doug Furness. <laughs> My new favorite 1997 wrestler, Doug Furness. Doug Furness. Will be in action tonight. Doug Furness. Oh, there's Farouk. Oh, he was just waiting, picking his spot. Um, I forgot to do this, so uh, while we're watching Farouk screw over Ahmed Johnson here, you know, turn his black, his back on his black brethren, a little black-on-black violence to help a white man out, why don't you go ahead and uh, – Send that panda gift that we forgot to send at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, yeah. You can't forget about that. And Sasha's sitting at home. She's got nothing better to do than check her Instagram DMs and see these panda gifts. So, There was a point in time when he was Kona Crush where they they were really pushing Crush to be a main eventer. And I don't know what derailed that or where that went or what happened. Oh yeah, back in 1997, where you'd you'd wear your boxers outside of your pants, <laughs> pull them up a little bit extra, because you know it's not yeah. at his waist. The boxers are pulled up. <laughs> mm-hmm. A little replay here. Oh, he got underneath those stairs. Yeah. That was that a punch or was that a forearm? Don't think too deep. New England Patriot type weekend for Ahmed Johnson. All right, we got a panda for those of you not watching along with us, uh, who is imprisoned, um, pushing its face through the bars of its cell. Quarantine. Looking at uh, quarantine. Quarantine panda. We were looking for that. <laughs> Quarantine Panda, ready to get the fuck out. Uh, I never really liked Shawn Michaels with the cowboy hat. Really? Why not? I don't know. I mean... Cowboy hats just didn't scream sexy boy to me. Like, don't get me wrong. He's dressed like an extra from a Garth Brooks music video right now. And I know that's who he is because he's from Texas. Yeah, about to say, he's one. Of, he's from right outside of San Antonio, actually. But the Michael, like, the Michaels I'm looking at now does not resemble the in-ring presentation of Shawn Michaels that I'm used to seeing. He never presented himself as a country guy. So seeing him dressed up in the cowboy boots and the jeans and the button-up shirt and the cowboy hat, 
what was your favorite later on? What was your favorite WWF championship of all time? The one right after this one. So this is the winged eagle. You're talking the big eagle, the one with yeah. the blue strap. Yeah. All right. You know mine is uh, the smoking skull belt. Oh yeah. If you if you go on special belts, yeah, you can add that one in there. How about the the one that never really was but existed, but they lost it, the Brahma Bull belt. Well, it never really was. So no. I mean, it existed. They just never got it on TV. <laughs> My favorite belt of all time, though, was the big gold belt, the world heavyweight title from WWE, the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. The big gold belt is my all-time favorite. Mm -hmm. That's a good one, too. It looked better with the NWO spray painted on it. No, it did not. That was a <laughs> disgrace. Graffiti. <laughs> yeah, man. They sprayed NWO across the front of that belt. See, I don't like the colored leather. That's my problem. That was my problem with the wing, uh, the big, the big eagle. The one that you like was the blue leather. Mm -hmm. I like black leather. I feel like leather should be black. I like my leather like I like my coffee, like I like my men. Black. It is you know what it is. You know that's not leather's natural color, though. Like no, I understand that. <laughs> but, like, but you don't like colored leather. But I'm like, you, but, you, but you do. Blue also isn't leather's natural color. So I never claimed it was. Black isn't technically a color, though. Blue it is. is. It is. No, the black and what? It is the absorption of all colors. Exactly. It is not a color. It is the absorption of all colors. And white is the lack of all color, or vice versa, one of the two. Light is a reflection of all colors. Yeah, there you go. I also don't like the white leather belts. Oh, you don't like the, uh, the white uh, intercontinental belt? Nope. Oh, see, I actually like that one better than the. And I didn't like the yellow one. I didn't like the yellow one either. Is he doing the four horsemen? Is he sending a subliminal message there? I doubt it, but, you know, I did mention on this same night the four horsemen are on Nitro. And that was the, um, the this incarnation that's on there right now, I believe, is Ric Flair, Mongo, Chris Benoit, and Dean Malenko. We all know how much you love Dean Malenko. <laughs> oh fuck Dean Malenko fucking creep it's crazy we're watching 1997 right before Wrestlemania 13 mm -hmm. 12 years later Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker would put on arguably the greatest match ever 12 years after this would be Probably their prime. And 12 years after their prime, they're tearing the house down. Yeah, man. Two years in a row. Like, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd argue that match is the best match period of all time, but it's, to me, the best WrestleMania match I've ever seen. Oh, that's what I meant. Best WrestleMania match, yeah. Yo, so you've got, I'd say, in the arguments of best WrestleMania matches, and we talked about this last week, you've got Austin and Bret Hart. You've got Macho Man and uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And you've got this match. And then maybe... Michaels versus Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle said that that match is his best match or his favorite match of all time. I mean, but how many people had their best match against Shawn Michaels, though? You know, <laughs> like, it's kind of a thing. You put them in, put them in there with a. Uh... Which is why you could say the same thing about Undertaker. How many people have had their best match against The Undertaker? Mm -hmm. So you put those two guys that make you famous, those hit makers, two of the best of all time in the ring together. And it's and magic. Let them time. do their thing. And it's different than, like, you know, other matches they've had. Like, they had that great Hell in the Cell match, that first one, still my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, you pretty much put them in there and just let them do their thing. And it was fucking amazing. I'm not this a fan guy, of the. Talk uh, about hit makers. The hit man. I am not a fan of the mostly pink. I like that the tights are mostly black when his tights are almost all pink, too. And it's just the black highlights. I do not like that look. But this is the original real real men wear pink. He never claimed it was salmon. Real <laughs> yeah, men no, wear pink. Oh no, he wears pink. And he's like he talked about it before too. He was like he wore pink on purpose. <laughs> Hell yeah. I got robbed last year. You're gonna get robbed at Survivor Series.
Why would he injure himself? He'd go out to a bar somewhere and get his ass whooped by a bunch of random Navy motherfuckers. Or well, that's not him injuring was. himself. That's a bunch of random Navy, Navy motherfuckers injuring him. <laughs> eh, he set himself up for it, though. I'll just credit Psycho Sid all the way. When was, oh, that wasn't until like 1999, 2000 that he broke his leg, so we're not going to get to that match for a long time on our watch along. Yeah. That's still like, I see. One of the hardest the things oh. to watch. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I was right up there. Remember, oh, well, you don't watch, watch basketball, but basically the same thing happened to Paul George. Went up when he came back down, his leg went like, God. Uh huh. Every fucking time, yeah, the lights yeah. go out. Hit and the, the dong, dong sound. Dong, yeah. Oh, you said dong. See, I said dong a couple weeks ago. <laughs> now you're saying dong. The blue light. <laughs> and I'm guessing you still don't like this tire, though. Uh, I'm not a fan of the top. Yeah. And like I said, I didn't really remember it. Um, this is – I'm used to the more fitted, uh, not-so-loose tops that he wore with mm -hmm. the more ornate designs on them. Yeah. That's coming, like, probably towards the summer, I think, if I remember yeah. correctly. This almost looks like he's wearing velvet. This is nice. What is that, velvet? <laughs> See, this is also kind of like the promo that we just got on Raw, the way he's talking. Mm -hmm. It's not the dark, ominous promos that we got used to from the dead man before his one match at WrestleMania every year over the last few years. It is. He's right. Agreed. Of course you do. It's weird to me that he's a fucking ginger. Yeah. <laughs> we couldn't really tell back then because of the way the cameras were because we just thought his hair was dark. Mm -hmm. But, like, he started dying it later. Mm -hmm. You know, when the ginger comes out, it always trips me up a little bit. Yeah. Also... That's clearly a makeup and not a tattoo teardrop on his cheek. Mm -hmm. And what is with the fucking weird makeup above his eyebrows? I don't know, man. I have no idea what's happening there. What did he just say? Oh, he's going to kill Shawn Michaels. Yeah, I figured that was just of it. Yeah. <laughs> and here he comes. Breaking the glass ceiling every time he walks through. What was um? I'm sure they only did it once, maybe twice. When they uh, was it was it Mania when he came out and the actual actual glass shattered when he walked out? Mm -hmm. That was Mania. That was this Mania. I think so. Yeah. If it wasn't this Mania. It was 14 against Shawn Michaels. It didn't happen there. Okay. I remember that one specifically because I was watching that one. I didn't watch this Mania live. <laughs> I love like he's too good to hold his own microphone. So he made Jim Ross come out and hold it for him. Or maybe he's just being that heel and not getting in the ring. He can still hold a microphone, though. Oh, oh yeah, this is true. There's, there's Vader back Ooh. there ready to come out. Oh, and they call Vader. In the dark, yep. <laughs> he like, oh, shit. <laughs> yep, I ain't going back that way. <laughs> like, I can either deal with them or I can deal with Vader. 
It's like, uh, I don't think that's a good choice here. Also, it's weird how you get so used to things like seeing Austin with the wrist tape that when he doesn't have the wrist tape, he looks weird without it. Yeah. Like he looks more naked and it's just wrist tape that's missing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Well, just what like, you know, the we got- fuck is this? <laughs> What the fuck is this? What are we doing? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, it was, wow. It was a rewind. I was like, why are we showing a Western Union commercial right now? We're doing a rewind from like 10 minutes ago. By the way, uh, time check. I'm at 22, 12, 13, 14, 15. What I was gonna say that we talking about how like one thing missing makes you makes the wrestler look like more naked. It's almost like now how we got used to seeing everybody with knee pads on, but then the one time we see one guy without them on, it looks so weird. Uh huh. Speaking of no knee pads, British Bulldog. Well, he wears them. He's gonna pull them up. But like, remember how Ric Flair used to like wrestle with those knee pads down on his calves all the time for no yeah. reason. I've never understood why you've got one manager managing multiple. Like, British Bulldog and Owen Hart are not part of the Nation of Domination. So why is Chris Scott out here with them and also with the Nation of Domination? Because he's not aligned with them, but they're clients. You still got to make your money. Yeah, that, it's almost it, like, once again, let's go, let's, go, let's go to basketball. You know, say you manage LeBron James. Doesn't mean you can only manage players that play for the Lakers. You can manage Man. teams that play for like the Atlanta Hawks or the Chicago Bulls, whatever you want to do. These are your clients. You work for your clients and you get more clients, so you get paid more money. Managers Listen, are about getting paid, bro. I, I hear you, but right now we need to focus on the greatest wrestler of 1997, Doug Furness, and the match he's about to have. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rookie, Doug. rookie of the year, 1997. Doug Furness. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's give Doug Furness his proper due. And I guess I was wrong. Bulldog did not pull those knee pads up to his knees. Nice drop down, leapfrog drop kick combo. Technically sound. Got a little yin yang <laughs> there on his pants. <laughs> That's all he needs to do. Why are we criticizing him? Yeah, you see that sh shoulder block? You don't need to talk when you hit someone like that. Oh, man. Sometimes, oh. Matt, sometimes. He missed. Sometimes what? Sometimes you concern me. Were you not impressed by Doug Furness last week? Not as impressed as you were. He was way better than LaFon. Way better than LaFon. Clearly, if there were to be a breakout star from this tag team, it would be Doug Furness. It would not be. Are you LaFon. saying? Are you saying he's the Shawn Michaels of the tag team, and yes. LaFon is is the is the uh, Marty, Marty Jannetty? Yes, yes. <laughs> Problem is, neither one of them went anywhere. So, <laughs> well, that's because we didn't have Roddy Piper, so that Furness or uh, yeah, Furness could put LaFon through a fucking barber shop window, or the butcher, or uh, the barber. We didn't have that here. You're right. We didn't. I need to know what happened to Doug Furness. I might have to look that up. <laughs> Where he went, what happened to him? Did he become somebody else that I might know? And did he all of a sudden, like, you know, become somebody else that's wearing a mask? Hey, ref, calm down, man. What, what, you, what you so mad about? Like he saw the steps were loose, so he picked oh. them up, and he just happened to drop. See, he just dropped it. He didn't throw it at him. It just, you know, it slipped out of his hands. Oh, that's sad. Is he dead? Yeah, back Damn. in 2012. Damn. Oh shit! Why he got a two by four? Everybody know, in the back, run. Hacksaw run. Jim Duggan ain't here. Run. If you in oh. there, he about to he done fucked up your door. Why'd you drop your two by four? Because the two by four wasn't breaking the door down. 
I know, but his foot was. He didn't need his. He didn't need to drop a two by four to kick it. Listen, if you're swinging a two by four and it ain't getting it done, and you swing your foot and it does get it done. Do you really need a two by four? Or you just need to start kicking motherfuckers. You can do both. That's my point. He retired in 2000. He died in 2012 um, from hypertensive heart disease. Juicy. I guess he joined ECW in 96. I forgot that LaFont was out there. Although he's very forgettable. <laughs> Apparently, he spent a lot of time in ECW. He was in ECW 96. <laughs> Later this year, he'd go back to ECW. Oh, okay. He's a Paul Heyman. He'd stay guy. down there. Yeah. Well, I mean, Paul Heyman is one of the best talent scouts in wrestling ever. So clearly, Paul Heyman saw. Fuck you, Travis. Um, fuck you. Uh, Paul Heyman saw <laughs> in furnace what I did. Are you just now seeing that? Yeah, from 45 minutes ago. <laughs> fuck you. Uh, yeah, when I was like, I got to do one last thing before we start. Yeah, that was it. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Oh, man. Shotgun Saturday night. So we had Shotgun Saturday Night, Sunday Night Heat, Velocity. Those weren't all happening at the same time. No, I know. Shotgun Saturday Night was first. Yeah. And then we got Sunday Night Heat, and then Velocity came after Shotgun Saturday Night went away. Right. Because Velocity was a Saturday show. Sunday Night Heat was a Sunday show. But at one time, we had four WWF wrestling shows on TV. Yeah, we did. And at one point, two of them were trash. But there was also a period of time when Sunday night. Don't talk was... about. Hmm? I was gonna say don't don't talk about SmackDown and Velocity like that, Travis. Shit. There was this one period of time though when Sunday Night Heat was the shit. Like I remember watching it on Sunday nights because a lot of times I wasn't able to watch Raw just because you know, be you know school night and shit. I know Sundays a school night also, but it was. Short. You remember WWF New York? Yeah, I remember WWF New York. That's where they had the Miss Golden Thong competition. <laughs> and seeing as we're living in quarantine times, Travis, what should you do when you wash your hands? Huh? Since we are living in quarantine times with COVID-19, what should you do when you wash your hands, Travis? I have no idea what you're talking about. They had the Golden Thong competition at WWF New York. You're supposed to wash your hands for 20 seconds while reciting a song that may be related to the Golden Thong competition. The oh, thong? sing the oh, sing the thong song. Nice, okay. Travis. Okay. I'm like, what the fuck how is he much talking more about? How could I spell this out for you? Dude, I forgot all about that shit. You know how long ago that was? I figured all I had to do was say song and thong and you could put the two together. Nah, nah, nah. Because I forgot and I said that shit. Oh, <laughs> slam me to the bulldog. One, two, three. Oh, come on. Bulldog's a tough motherfucker, man. Bullshit. That was Doug Furness's big win right there. There you go, Bulldog. Damn it. Owen Hart got in the ring. That should have been a DQ anyway. Yeah. He got There's the no ring. way he kicked out of that. Fuck that shit. Now, see, if he had executed a, a finishing maneuver after that, he probably would have got the win, but he got, you know, he got too impatient. We don't even know if he has a finishing maneuver, Travis, all right? Well, he, uh, you mean to tell me that you don't think the great Doug Furnace has a finishing maneuver? I don't. <laughs> when you're that great, you don't need one. You can clearly win the match at do. any point. Clearly you do. 
And that was supposed to be a DQ. It's not his fault that Owen Hart got in the ring and got involved in that Nike sweatsuit, that green and white Nike sweatsuit. Hey, don't yell at the manager. He just there to get you paid. It ain't his fault. Yeah, Chris Scott didn't do shit. You leave that man alone. Now, now this one right here, yeah, you can be mad at Owen Hart. He fucked up. Here's my thing. Like, yeah, he hit you with a slammy, but you won the match. It's not like you lost. Yeah, but, you know, you fucked up. I'm, I'd be mad if I got hit in the face with a slammy, too. How like, mad? Mad enough to where I cuss him out after the match. Okay. <laughs> Like, we ain't going to throw hands about it right now, but I'm, I'm going to cuss you out. Well, that's good to know, because now I know that I can hit you in the face with a slammy without us throwing hands. Context, sir. On accident. Context. <laughs> Context. Accidentally hit you in the face with a slammy. I mean, as you know, you and I are both good at pretending that intentional shots are not so intentional. So, if we can fool a Polish hammer, we can fool each other. <laughs> Dude, for the long – I can't even believe that you told me. Like, for so long, he thought that exactly. Oh. Down goes the slammy. Going back to Madison Square Garden. Savio Vega. Mm. I don't remember what he did, but there was one point where Savio Vega, I hated, and it was, I believe, during his feud with Stone Cold Steve Austin. But he did or said some shit, and he was, like, my most hated wrestler of, like, that feud, that that point in time. Yeah. There was a time when he was, like, working with DX leading up to – um that uh, WrestleMania match, too. So there's a good chance he really was doing some shit to Stone Cold that pissed you off. Because he does shit like this, so, you know. And here's that really bad Dominator. The thing is here, I don't even blame – I don't blame for for that. I blame my man for that shit. Is that – No, it's not Jackie. Who the hell are these women – what is going on? What is going on here? Because I'm pretty sure that girl dancing, is it the girl from the uh, DX video? It might be. There's a clip of her dancing in the DX video. Well, I know who you're talking about. I just... It was that same silver bikini and those same moves. They yeah, probably just used that footage. Savio Vega had a real bad day. Speaking of those graphics at the bottom, I meant to point out when we were talking about NXT. I like what they did in that um, championship match. And they put the graphic up when they were introducing each other. Okay, expand. You know, when they put up, you know, their name, their height, their weight, you know, fighting style. I didn't like that part. They probably should have put their signature maneuvers there instead, you know. But look at that, Travis. Hey, hey, show some respect. This is Rocky Maivia. This is not The Rock. This is Die Rocky Die. Get off Rocky. Is the IC champ at this point still or no? I don't know, but they're just beating the shit out of The Rock. No wonder The Rock did this to Farouk years later or a year later or whenever, months later. It was about a year after this. Yeah, see? If I got treated like that by the nation, I would have no. infiltrated and destroyed it, and it ousted. Was, it, was, it was less than a year, but it was. Dude, these well, are all. There are clips from this Shotgun Center Night that were used in the fucking the, DX the edges, video. Yeah, the Edges video. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> wow. It's Vader time. Is he going to wear the Mastodon helmet? No, I don't think he does anymore. Oh, Paul. Oh, Paul in the urn with Undertaker's family's ashes inside. <laughs> this is my favorite version of Mankind. Really? 
Not my favorite McFoley, but my favorite Mankind. The Brown. Huh? So who's your favorite McFoley? My favorite McFoley is... Um, Hold on a second. My favorite McFoley is Cactus Jack. Okay. I was looking because it looked like McFoley was missing a patch of hair here. And I remember him having that hair missing, but that was when he was fighting the rock in that. And they had the I quit match and the empty arena match and shit. I think I remember him pulling his own hair out before that, though. Yeah, he also used to play with rats and sat on the ring apron and stabbed himself in the leg. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's why this is my favorite Mankind, because this Mankind was like the real psycho Mankind. You know, don't get me wrong. Corporate Mankind later, was it was almost the babyface Mankind. That yeah. didn't. That was more Mick Foley to me than it was Mankind. Like, this was Mankind. Like, I liked, uh, <laughs> see. He'll be Jim! Yeah, with the guy wins. But I was, um... La Femme Nikita. <laughs> I've been uh, like I've been watching like other Raws from like '99 and shit right now. And yep, they're, they're like missing that front patch. They're in the um when they had just formed the union, and he was talking about his problems with Triple H. And he was like, "I think the reason why is because China's been looking at me funny lately." And she's like, yeah, one day when I was in the locker room, she saw me in my birthday suit, which I must say I look pretty damn good in. He was like, just the way he cut promos at that point was just so much fun to me. Speaking of birthday suits, do you remember Naked Midian? No, I don't remember Naked Midian. You don't remember Naked Midian? No. Okay, first off, Phineas is Midian. Yeah, I know that. Okay. After the demise of the Ministry of Darkness, when Viscera became Big Daddy, Big Big Daddy V, there was a point in time where Midian would. They didn't become Big Daddy V right away. He was still Viscera. You know, he did the big Viscera, world's largest love machine and shit. But anyway, go Correct. ahead. Midian would streak, and he'd come out just wearing a fanny pack, and he'd streak in the middle of matches and shit. And he was naked, Midian. It was a thing that happened. I don't know why it was a thing, but it was a thing. Like, I don't remember why this was happening, but it happened. It was kind of like that uh, fat guy that used to uh, uh, dick, uh, Big Dick or... Big Dick Johnson? Yeah, that used to dance for DX in the... Yeah. Bow tie and the little pants. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Used to oil himself up and shit. Mm-hmm. Basically what I look like if I were to dress that way. So if any of our fans want to know what I look like uh, undressed, just go watch a Big Dick Johnson segment. Hi, Bear. I did call this last week, too. I told you that Paul Bear was managing both Mankind and Vader, and they were in an alliance against The Undertaker. But I think that's why this is my favorite Mankind is because this is the mankind that feuded with the undertaker in the boiler room brawls mm-hmm. in the buried alive matches so on and so forth and those are some of my most fond memories from that era of wrestling and the, him squealing like a pig cuz that reminded me of leatherface i feel like they only put them together cuz they both have masks like Similar masks. Yeah, they're both wearing leather strap masks across their face. So uh, guess, you guys make a good team. <laughs> so since you're uh, abstaining from alcohol, what's in the goblet tonight? Um, right now, it's just Kool-Aid. Just Kool-Aid. Well, not what? even really Kool-Aid. It's... Um, in order to get those little single packets with the Hawaiian punch things, mm-hmm. it was that blue. What flavor? Blue? Mm-hmm. I was never a big fan of the Godwins. They didn't do it for me. No, uh, yeah, yeah. Also, much- do you remember Hillbilly Jim's fucking acceptance speech at the Hall of Fame? No, I do not. 
he just went on and on and on. And that's the thing. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not I, I've saying, heard about it, but I never heard it. Actually, heard the heard the speech. I'm not saying Hillbilly Jim isn't a legend, but also, what did Hillbilly Jim accomplish in wrestling? Because you know, people are like, "Oh, the Bellas shouldn't be going into the Hall of Fame. This person shouldn't be going in." But what the fuck did Hillbilly Jim do more than any of these other names that we're inducting that qualified him to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? And in the right city. When the Hall of Fame was happening, <laughs> well, when WrestleMania Mike was happening, Kyoto is he still around? I don't know. I think so. I feel like I haven't seen him in a long time, but I also haven't really paid much attention to the refs lately either. In WWF, speaking WWF. of refs, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but you know, once again, watching those '99 Raws, keep seeing Teddy. Oh yeah, the ref. <laughs> so, oh so. Funny thing, you know how we talk about like people are wrestling fans, but they don't admit they're wrestling fans. Yeah, I had that happen at work the other day. I wore an Undertaker shirt, and don't get me wrong. Unless you watch wrestling, you're not going to know it's an Undertaker shirt, right? Right. It doesn't say the Undertaker on it or anything like that. It is just a coffin with his symbol in the middle of the coffin. Mm -hmm. That is all that's on the front of the shirt. And I was walking through my headquarters with the shirt on. And one of the managers said, hey, you watch that WWE stuff? Is that an Undertaker shirt? And I'm like, well, first off, if you know this is an Undertaker shirt, it's not that WWE stuff. You know exactly what the fuck it is. But apparently he knows Adam Pierce, who he showed me pictures of Adam Pierce, and I knew who he was, um, is that bald guy that we see come out, you know, on occasion on Raw when, like, they're breaking, like, he's in the suit, he's bald. He, like, he's kind of like the, they talk to him backstage when they're announcing a match and they need, like, a voice of the authority or whatever. He was dealing with Sasha and Bailey when they were in the locker room and they made that match. And anyway, he's a trainer for NXT. I guess he went to uh, high school with them. Mm -hmm. And he's a few, the guy that I was talking to is a few years older than me, but there's an even older guy that's a manager who was also in there. And he goes, you know, I was flipping through the TV, and they had some wrestling on the other day, and they were wrestling in front of an empty arena. He goes, and it was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen because everything else was shut up. And I'm like, you were watching wrestling. It was like you were you just guys, watching wrestling, dude. Why are some you? old motherfuckers that are just <laughs> trying to pretend like you weren't watching wrestling. They use the term empty arena. <laughs> yeah, so I had that happen. That's funny. But yeah, no, I don't care. Just because you, unless you watch wrestling, you don't know that that's an Undertaker shirt, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, wow. Whatever happened to Henry? I don't know what happened to good old Henry Godwin. I know, like I said, Phineas became midi, but I don't know what he did. This is not a great match. Like, this is not. Keeping me as entertained as the uh, the tag team match we had last week with uh, Owen and Bulldog and well, Furnace Lafon. I say it was Owen and Bulldog though. <laughs> and Furnace, don't will you stop discounting Doug Furnace's contributions? <laughs> I'm sorry for not giving Doug Furnace his just due, sir. Some fucking bullshit. I want to see – I'm going to – two things I'm going to start doing, Travis. One, I'm going to go on Twitter, and I'm going to start spamming either memes or just hashtag LaFemme Nikita. <laughs> and number two is I'm going to start trying to get Doug Furnace for Hall of Fame trending. I say I don't think he cares. Like, it's... and Paul, like, what's wrong with you? And man, kind of like, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, let's take another look at that. Yeah, no, he did that on purpose. He didn't care. 
He didn't give two shits. He, just like, he started. He looked at him like, "Yeah, I hit you uh-huh. in the face with the chair, right upside your head." Fuck Hello. You. Yeah, who are you? <laughs> Where's Sunny? When did she get here? I don't know, but this will be the last episode of 1997. We well, I guess we could do more, but we're getting to two hours now. Mm. That's a long watch along, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or an hour and a half. I got to look. Yeah, it is a long watch along. We can, we can go back to some other stuff. Some well, other I mean, stuff. it's only another 30 minutes, and depending on what – I mean, I've heard rumors that the Performance Center is going to be shut down. <laughs> so, especially if we don't get any new wrestling, we can definitely – I mean – October 27th, I see The Rock with the Nation. I saw some Sable. We got some D. Like, a lot of the really best shit is in 1997, 1998. So, mm-hmm. if it's only an hour, 20-some minutes, and we're not spending a lot of time on shit, I mean, fuck. October 6th, we got Kane. Yeah. If, they, if they're not giving us any wrestling, then it, and all we're really doing is, is the watch-along, then, yeah, we can do that. All right. Damn, That's that was it. it. Yeah, I'm at Johnson. We finished with that match? Boo! Yeah. This week was not as good as last Boo. week. Boo! Right, go I got to say, this week was not as good as last week. Not nearly as good as last week. This is, this is why Nitro was whooping your ass in the ratings right now. Well, let's not forget that, that shit. Also, in 1997, Nitro was two hours at this point, and Raw was only an hour long. This is true. So you got two hours of wrestling content on one show with the NWO, and then you had, like, really fun episodes like last week, and then this week, you had an eh episode. Mm-hmm. You had an eh episode that featured Mankind, Vader, Mankind Bret Hart. Mankind and Vader in a bleh match, though. Right. But if, if I were just to tell you, Travis, we're going to watch a Monday Night Raw, and on this Monday Night Raw, we've got Shawn Michaels, Owen Hart and British Bulldog, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Undertaker, Bret Hart, Mankind, and Vader. You'd be like, oh, shit. You got all those people on one Monday Night Raw? That's a damn good Raw. Let's watch that Raw. And then you watch it. But yeah. take yourself back to 1997. And you're sitting here at home watching this on Monday night. And you get to this boring-ass tag team match. Are you going to continue to watch this boring-ass tag team match? Or are you going to flip over to TNT and see what the NWO is doing? Probably flip over to TNT. Well, I mean, I wouldn't because I you, didn't. But. I know you wouldn't. But, like, you know. I'm a loyalist. Like, See, I did a lot of flipping. So <laughs> now that I have DVR and I have the option, I watch one show, almost always NXT first, and then I go and watch AEW recorded. Mm-hmm. But yeah, before that, we had to flip back and forth, and I flipped back and forth a lot. So yeah. All right, Travis. Love- well, we're gonna have to pick. What do you want to do next week? Do you want to do an old episode of NXT, some ECW, or you want to go find some '96 stuff? We'll see if we even. Because my understanding is WrestleMania has been recorded and the Raw after has been recorded. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about NXT or SmackDown for next week. I don't know if the PC is still going to be shut down, how much content they have, what we're really going to get. So, Or you just want to play it by ear, and we'll see next week when we record. Because I know Illinois shut down until April 30th. So the rest of this month. So are we. Yeah. So um, do you just want to play it by ear and see, or do you want to? Um, what was that October one? Oh, that was that's a longer one. Let's let's look at some '96 stuff for next week. We'll see okay. what we can figure out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do that one I didn't want to do. You sure about that? Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that one I didn't want to do. The one right after WrestleMania 12. Yeah. No, I'm I'm going back. So next week, just yeah. so you guys know, uh, we are going to do 1996. Uh, it'd be April 1996. I don't know. I, I It's not letting me go back far enough um, to see. All, oh, there it is. See all. And then you fucked me. All right. Anyway, next week, 1996, Raw after WrestleMania, which should be April 1st, 1996, right? Um... I was actually in the process of looking at myself when you said you were struggling. Hold on. No, I don't want to look at that. Because I feel like I picked that because it had the Undertaker in the picture. That would make sense. 
keep going. Finish what you were. No, I was just I was looking that up and I was trying to let everyone know when, what we were watching. I know. Close the show. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys can find us as always on Facebook. And um please go and join the group there on Facebook, Facebook.com slash groups slash smacking it raw. We do appreciate that. We do enjoy the conversations. We know wrestling has been a little dead as far as product and content lately. So uh, this is a community that we can go and we can talk about anything wrestling. It doesn't have to be the current product. Come join us. Get involved in our chats. I've been really bad about posting them, and I've been slacking, and I'm sorry, and I will do better going into the future, starting with SmackDown tonight in about 20 minutes, and then WrestleMania. You guys can find me on Twitter at Matt Ritter. That is at M-A-T-T-R-I-D-D-E-R. You guys can find Travis on Twitter and Instagram at Sir Cussalot. That is at S-I-R underscore C-U-S-S-A-L-O-T-T. Um, is there going to be a new Super Flashy next week? No. Um, but, yeah, you were right. It's April 1st, 1996 for that next That's row. what I thought. Because <clears throat> I didn't know it was after WrestleMania. I just picked it because it was The Undertaker. Yeah, yeah. Um, not a new Super Flashy era of tomorrow next week, but that doesn't no, matter. the show's guys. come back two weeks, I believe. But they're only going to be on for like a month, and they're going to disappear again, so. It doesn't matter, though, because you guys can still go to Facebook.com slash group slash Super Flashy Arrow of Tomorrow and chat there about your favorite superhero shows, the CW Universe, your theories on why Crisis ruined the CW Universe and why everything's been shit since then, or how, as I said, our boy Oliver Queen ruined the world and 2020 and gave us COVID-19 because we didn't have it before he recreated everything in his fucked up version of it, so... Uh, that's not actually true. But go ahead. Sure it is. Um, no, it's not true. When did crisis happen? In January. Really? I thought it was the end of last year that crisis happened. Half was at the end of, of last year. The other half was in January. He remade the world in January. Yeah, it was recorded before that, though. Anyway. <laughs> it was recorded before that. <laughs> you guys can also check out all of our content and all of our shows at facebook.com slash creation world. I mean, none of it is uh, live, Matt. <laughs> I know. That was my out, Travis. Um, you guys can go check that out. Also follow Facebook or uh, on Twitter and Instagram at the creation world. That is T H E C R E A T I A world link tree on my Twitter on Travis's Twitter. And I'm sure on the creation world Twitter, you guys go check out videos, YouTube, and Pornhub, we are the number one wrestling podcast on Pornhub. Keep, Super us, that Fla- Keep us that way. Super Flashy Arrow is the number one superhero podcast on Pornhub. Keep us that way. The number one Arrowverse podcast on Pornhub, y'all. There you go. So keep us that way. And then, of course, I have the link tree for all of the Smack and Raw audio locations that you can go find this podcast if you want to listen to the auto- audio version while you watch along. Um with us on these watch along episodes or just while you're driving or sitting at home, cleaning, whatever you're doing. Yeah. Other than that, I don't think we have anything else to plug. So for Sir Cussalot, Travis Pointer, I am the warden, Matt Ritter. We are smacking a raw and we are that damn good. Damn.